So we've had um, some very, very, uh, you know, uh, heartwarming successes um, using whole genome sequencing in the clinic. Um, I think one of the, the sort of stories that really sticks with me is one of the first patients that we use whole genome sequencing on. Um, and uh, this was sort of in 2017, 2018, when whole genome sequencing was not available on the NHS. At that point, whole genome sequencing was a research tool and it wasn't widely available. Um, so the patient is a patient whom um, I know from my clinical genetics uh, specialty. He has a genetic disorder called xeroderma pigmentosum, XP. He is unable to fix damage on his skin from ultraviolet radiation. Okay, so he gets a lot of skin lesions and he's got to look after himself and use lots of factor 50. And these patients tend to be a little bit more sensitive towards developing cancer. So unfortunately for this poor patient, he was 30 years old. He presented with a lesion on his eyebrow, which turned out to be a cancer of the blood vessel lining. It's called an angiosarcoma. So that's a very, very rare cancer. Um, and um, unfortunately, he didn't respond to all the usual therapies that we give patients with angiosarcoma. His disease progressed very aggressively. And within sort of the year, year and a half, he was really, really unwell. He was um, stuck in hospital, unable to go home. Um, he had tumor spreading everywhere, including his, there was tumor in his lymph nodes. It was sort of disfiguring his face. He had tumor around his lungs. It was causing his lungs to deflate and he was unable to go home. He was really, really very sick. Now we had done a whole genome sequence at that point. Um, but remember, this is really early days. He's one of the first patients to get this. But in his whole genome sequencing data, we found a very specific abnormality that suggested that he might be sensitive to a group of drugs called immunotherapies. Immunotherapies were not widely available on the NHS at that time. It was already available in the US for patients who had metastatic disease, who had cancer widespread. So we felt that he was the sort of patient who might respond to this drug. Unfortunately, at the time, because it wasn't available in the NHS, we were unable to get him the drug. And um, even when we were able to, to get access to the drug, um, nobody would pay for it. The NHS wouldn't pay for it because it hadn't been gone through the sort of the standard approval process. So I was very inspired by this patient because, you know, he, he was on his deathbed really and, and he felt that this was worth a shot and he crowdsourced funding for this drug. Um, his community, he's from Hull, his community just came up around him and helped him out and it was really kind of an extraordinary story. He got the drug um, and we have these incredible scans where, you know, in one of the set of scans you can see that he's got tumour everywhere and three cycles of treatment later everything is melting away. After seven cycles, everything has melted away and he walks home. And today he's still alive. Next week he's coming to visit the lab to see what we do in the lab to try to interpret cancer genomes.